This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Is your original life sling cover ruined from UV rays? Make your own life sling cover following this comprehensive instructional video. Now your life sling can match the rest of your canvas using UV resistant Sunbrella marine grade fabric from Sayerite. This design will include for envelope sides which will house the plastic stiffeners which help to support the cover. This complicates construction compared to the other simple box covers on the market which do not include these compartments. The extra effort is well worth it. We're going to use the old inserts in this life sling bag, so we'll rip the stitches and remove them. If you don't have these, you can typically purchase thin acrylic or plastic sheets from your local hardware store or craft store. Next, we will take measurements of the bag. A few versions of the life sling are on the market, so taking measurements yourself is important. Write those measurements down on paper. The top of this bag is almost totally gone, but enough of the old vinyl still exists so we can get general measurements of it also. At the rear, where the bag attaches over the lifeline and stanchion, or rail, a fabric flap covers the attachment points. We will measure for this flap as well. Inside the bag is a special pocket that the rope is stored in. We will use a flexible tape measure here. With these measurements in hand, we're ready to build our new life sling bag from Sumbrella Marine Grade Fabric from Sayerite. Here are the finished sizes and number of panels that we need. We need to add one inch for seam allowance, so here is the cut size for each panel. Please note, life sling styles or versions vary, so check yours for correct measurements. To cut our Sunbrella fabric to size, we will strike lines on our fabric using a soapstone pencil and a straight edge. After all our panels are marked, we will use a hot knife to cut the Sunbrella fabric to size. The Sayerite Edge Hot Knife will seal the edge of the fabric and keep it from unraveling. It is a good idea to label each of the panels so you do not get confused. All of the Sunbrella panels are now laid out in an organized fashion. This helps keep the confusion down when assembly takes place. To cut the Fifertex Plus fabric to size we will simply use scissors as it does not easily unravel. The Fifertex Plus is a mesh vinyl fabric that allows items to dry out quickly because it allows water and air to flow through the bag or cover. Let's take a look at the old life sling cover. Notice that where the stanchion end rested, the flap of fabric abraded through the vinyl. Since we're using some umbrella, applying a protective chafe resistant fabric here is very important since umbrella's downfall is abrasion. So we will use the Fifertex Plus and cut a rectangle for this area to protect it from the top of the stanchion pole. Now all our panels are cut out and laid out in an organized fashion. Here we are seeing a future step of inserting the stiffeners into pockets along all sides of the cover. So, as we fashion this cover, we need to take into consideration that all hardware slash fasteners need to be sewn onto the outside panels before they are to be sewn together to form the pocket. Looking at our old worn out life sling cover, let's start installing fasteners, velcro and webbing, to the back panel first. So we will take some measurements to determine where each will go on our new Sunbrella panels. We also need to take into consideration the half inch seam allowance around the entire perimeter. So here Angela has marked that same distance plus that half inch for seam allowance to indicate where this velcro strip will go. After that's done she will sew down both long edges of the velcro to secure it to the back panel. To attach the cover to the lifelines, stanchion pole or rail we will use webbing with velcro sewn onto it. Measure the old webbing for size and then cut it with a hot knife to keep the edges from unraveling. Then cut the hook and loop velcro to size. If you'd like to change the fastening method, feel free to use your own type of fasteners. After all, you're making this cover yourself and you should have it done your way. You may want to use twist lock fasteners, snaps, or something completely different. We are sewing the velcro to the webbing here. Notice that when we reach a corner, Angela buries the needle lifts the sewing machine's presser foot, pivots the assembly around rotating on the needle, lowers the foot and continues to sew. 
In doing this, she has full control of the machine. And at times, she'll even rotate the balance wheel around by hand to sew small areas for even more control. A webbing Velcro closure like this requires the opposite side of the Velcro to be sewn on the other end and opposite side of the webbing. Here we'll follow the same procedure. Next, just sew this at the correct location on the back side of the panel. Here we're measuring the old to position it on the new. Fold the panel in half to find the center. It will be sewn with a few row of straight stitches at the center location, reversing several times. There are several Velcro strips which will hold the back cover flap in position and Velcro webbing loops on the back side of our life sling cover. Since the procedure is the same as what we have already shown, we will skip ahead. Now that our fasteners are all installed on this back cover, we can sew the opposite side of the back cover in place, thus creating our pocket for the insertion of the stiffener. Obviously, we must leave the top portion of the assembly open so we can insert the stiffener. And since we want to create a hem along the top in a later step, we will start sewing about a half inch away from the top edge, reversing and then sewing very close to the raw edges of the fabric, about an eighth inch away. This stitch will simply hold the two panels together so it is much easier to assemble all the sides in a later step. When we get around all three sides, stop short about a half inch from the top edge and leave it open. The front panel will have a Velcro strip sewn onto it. This is to hold the top cover in place. Here we have opted to use a two inch wide Velcro, but that does make removing the cover a little more difficult. You may want to use a one inch or one and a half inch wide Velcro instead. The Velcro has been positioned about a half inch from the top edge of the panel and at least that for the sides, since our seam allowance will take up a half inch in a later step. Now just sew around the perimeter of the Velcro. Once that's done, add the pocket backer for this front panel, just as you did before for the back panel. Remember to leave the top open. Let's move on and sew the side panels together to form a pocket for the stiffener board. We have opted to not install Velcro strip on the sides, but if we look ahead at the finished top, you can see the sides do not stay down. So for ours, since it is difficult to sew in Velcro after the cover is almost completely done, we will use a snap, which does work to hold the sides down to the cover. But in lieu of the snap, if we had it to do over, I believe we would have used a vertical one inch Velcro strip, which we could sew in at the back corner of the top and the sides. So, if you want to follow that advice, before you sew these two panels together, you should sew the Velcro in place at the top corner. Then sew the two panels together as we are here. Again, we started a half inch away from the top edge and left the top open so we could insert the stiffener. We're not going to show the opposite side being sewn. Here it is done. Now we'll concentrate on the back flap. Before we do anything, we need to sew a single hem around the three sides of the panel, not including the top edge. This hem will be about a half inch in size, and when we come to the bottom edge, we will cut a length of Velcro and sew it over the hem there. This Velcro should be the opposite side of what was used on our back panel. For us, that's the hook side. Here at this bottom edge, Angela will create a one inch hem to reinforce the area the Velcro is sewn to. We should have plenty of fabric to accommodate for this one inch hem, so don't worry. Sewing around the perimeter of this will be shown in double time. Lay the back flap onto the back panel and be sure the Velcro is lined up. 
Then determine where the opposite side of the other Velcro strips should be sewn on and mark those locations. Then sew the required Velcro sides to the back flap also. We're going to use Fifertex Plus Mesh as the shafe protection patch for the underside of this flap and it needs to be sewn on so it's about a half inch from the top side of this flap. Once it is sewn, position it on the back panel so the Velcro is attached and lined up accurately. Then create an approximate half inch hem along the top of the flap and sew it down to the back panel. Grab the Fifertex Plus mesh fabric that will be used for the inside pocket. Fold the bottom edge to form a triangle and measure across with the yardstick to about 4 inches and strike a line at that location. Take it to a sewing machine and sew across the line, remembering to reverse the beginning and the end to lock the stitch in place. Follow the same procedure for the opposite corner. Then cut off the excess fabric, leaving about a half inch of fabric along the stitch. Turn the pocket right side out and next create a single hem about a half inch or less around all the sides of the pocket. Position the hem so it will be facing the inside of the pocket. This will be shown in double time. We're using the Sayerite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine to sew this life sling cover. This is a true walking foot sewing machine that easily sews canvas and other upholstery applications. Not only is it a heavy duty sewing machine, but it's also priced very nicely. In fact, after a few projects like this, you can easily pay for the sewing machine. Next, take the inside pocket made from Fifertex Plus and the inside back panel section the part that does not yet have any sewing done to it. Take some measurements from the old bag to determine where the mesh pocket should be sewn. Remember to take into consideration the half inch seam allowance that will be used to seal the two halves of the fabric together encasing the stiffener. So we measured three inches on the old bag so we will position the mesh pocket three and a half inches down from the edge. At that position we will strike a line then we will measure where each side should rest from the old bag and transfer those measurements to the new bag using the soapstone pencil. To sew this pocket on we will line it up with a top line and side line and then sew down to the bottom of the pocket where the side meets the bottom portion of the pocket. When we come to the transition point, we will bury the needle to the thickest part of the shaft, raise the presser foot, rotate the assembly, lower the presser foot, and then continue to sew. We will skip ahead here and show the pocket installed on this panel. Sew this inside panel to the rear panel following the same procedure as done with all the sides. 
Start sewing about a half inch away from the top end and sew around the three sides leaving the top open. Now all we need to do is join all the sides together. To accomplish this, lay the panel so the outside surfaces are facing each other and line up the long edges. Take it to the sewing machine and start sewing from the top, leaving about a half inch or more unsewn at the top. Sew down its length. We're sewing about a half inch inside the raw edge of the fabric. Do not sew the bottom, only the long sides. Do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. Repeat that procedure for the opposite side. Take the rear panel assembly and lay it on top, being sure the outside surfaces are facing each other. The pocket for rope will be on the top, as shown. Sew it to the sides of the life sling bag leaving the portion at the top unsewn about a half inch or more, as done earlier. Now we just need to add the bottom of the bag, which we made from Pfeiffer Tex Plus, to allow any water to drain out and also allows for great breathability of the bag. Line up the mesh bottom to the bag's body. Angela likes to start sewing from the center position to ensure that the bottom will be centered. This looks a little tricky since the sides of the bag are made of two layers of some umbrella. It's rather thick, but it's not too difficult. As done elsewhere, whenever Angela stops sewing to make adjustments, she will bury the needle to the thickest part of the shaft so she does not lose her position. Then she makes adjustments and continues to sew. When a corner is reached, bury the needle in the corner, lift the foot, rotate the fabric, lower the foot, and sew on. Notice here she forgets to lift the foot, so she does that to let the fabric relax, then immediately lowers it and sews. We have skipped ahead slightly here and are now coming to the starting point. Flip the bag right side out and then insert the stiffeners. To close up the top of the bag, the envelope, simply roll the fabric over to create about a half inch hem. To make it easier, we will fold the internal panel, the one on top, in towards the inside of the envelope. Then fold the external panel, the one on the bottom, up and over the first hem. Take your time here and sew a few inches at a time, stop, bury the needle, and then fold the fabric a few more inches ahead and repeat the process. You can staple this prior to sewing if you like to hold it in place. When done sewing, you can remove the staples. Some of our customers prefer straight pins to staples. That's your choice. Angela is not using anything here. The seams where the corners fall are the most difficult to sew, and sometimes stapling them makes this easier. But don't worry, even if your seam does not lay perfectly flat, it still looks great in the end.
To finish off the top of our life sling bag, we will need to create boxing. To do this, take some measurements on the newly made bag. Measure the front and sides. Then cut a strip of boxing that is the total amount of that measurement plus an extra 4 inches. Make the width of the boxing 3 inches. It is best to cut it out with a hot knife. Create a single hem at one of the short ends and along one of the long sides. This hem should be about a half inch. Next, take the boxing strip and run it around the bag. The hemmed end should fall directly over the back corners where the seam was sewn. Once that exact length is determined, cut the excess off if necessary and create a single hem here on the short end as well. Fold the boxing in half to find the center. Do the same for the top of the bag panel as well. Lay the boxing strip over the top of the bag panel and be sure the folded creases are aligned. Outside surfaces should face each other. Take it to the sewing machine and start sewing them together starting close to the center crease line. Sew about a half inch in from the edges of the fabric. When we get to a corner, we will follow our normal procedure. Bury the needle, lift the foot, rotate the fabric, lower the foot, and sew. Flip the assembly over and sew the remaining unsewn portion. This places the top panel on top and the boxing on the bottom. Unfold the assembly so the boxing is turned right side out and next create a top stitch along the edges we just sewed down. To do this we need to start back along one of the sides folding the fabric over about a half inch so it will match up with our folded over portion that secures the boxing in place. Be sure to splay the fabric out flat by pulling against the first stitch from side to side as you sew and be sure to catch the half inch fabric on the bottom side as you sew this top stitch in place. A webbing loop will be used as a quick way to open the bag's top. Just fold it in half and sew it to the boxing's edge in the center. Sew onto the boxing the opposite side of the velcro. If you opted to install velcro along the two sides of the bag to keep the boxing laying down, you would sew this to the top now as well. Secure the bag's top to the body by securing the velcro together along the front edge. Mark the excess fabric hanging off the back side of the bag. Mark it along the stitch line that secures the back flap. Strike a line and cut off the excess with a hot knife. Every time we use a hot knife, we use a metal ruler on the back side to prevent damage to the tabletop below. 
Create a single hem here about a half inch and then sew the top to the back side of the bag so it rests against the back flap edge as shown here. Be sure to only sew through the back panels fabric and not accidentally through the front panels fabric underneath. When the top is secured, you will notice that the boxing sides do not sit up against the bag. They look like wings. So, since we did not sew in Velcro along the sides, we will simply install a snap at the back corner of the boxing. Here we are marking that location with a soapstone pencil. Then we will use the press and snap tool to install a cloth to cloth snap. The button and socket are installed here at the boxing corner and then the stud and eyelet on the side of the bag. Snap the sides, insert the life sling and secure the bag to the boat. Coming up next is the materials list and tools that were used to make this life sling cover. It typically only takes two yards of umbrella to make this bag in less than a yard of Fifertex mesh fabric. Feel free to modify this materials list as needed. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sarah website or subscribe to the Sarah YouTube channel. Get your loyal patronage to Sarah that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.